Hello and welcome to our channel, Tech Expert Tutorials. Postgres databases have become the most popular solution for majority of applications. This is because it is easy to use, it's flexible, it's reliable, it's efficient, it's highly secure, and has many advanced features not available in other data solutions. The AWS Aurora version has some additional advantages, such as being fully managed, highly scalable, and more efficient, along with having a serverless option, which is helpful when you have a highly variable process load. Other databases have compute and storage resources tied together, forcing you to expand both when you may only need more of one. However, AWS Aurora Postgres separates the compute from storage, allowing for a more flexible solution that can be optimized for each independently, meaning you can add more compute or more storage when needed. You're not forced to add both to solve a problem with just one. In this video, we are going to show you how easy it is to set up and use automation scripts. Using these scripts, we'll create and then delete an AWS RDS Aurora Postgres database programmatically. You could run one script to create a database for your project, and then run another script to delete that database when you are finished with it, or if you ever need to make major changes to your database. There are a few prerequisites you will need before running these scripts yourself. First, you will need an AWS Cloud account. Second, you need to know how to set up a Jupyter Notebook or run a Python script. You can learn this by watching our previous video on how to set up JupyterLab and Python using VS Code. We also suggest learning how to manually create an AWS database from the console first. You can watch our previous video on how to do this. You may also need to set up a separate VPC for this. If so, see my video on creating an AWS VPC. Links for all of these are in the description below. Okay, now we have a VS Code editor open to run our scripts. First, we have some variables we will need to set up to access the AWS. Here's an example of what they would look like. These variables would be stored in the appsettings.py file. Some of the key variables are the access key and the secret key. You get those from the console, along with the endpoint. You'll have a DB name that you want to give it and a user and password, along with the master user and password. You can use this current security group, or you can create your own. And these are some subnet IDs that are already in the current VPC. I'll be using those, just grouping them together. You'll see how all of these are used later. The next file that we'll cover is the standup database file. This is how we create our database. You need to set up a Conda environment. This is the instructions on how to set that up. You can see my other video on how to set up Conda in Python and VS Code. Link in the description below. First, we have a lot of import statements. The main ones here are the PSY COP G2. This is for Postgres. And then Avoto 3, which is for AWS, it's their SDK. Plus, you may need to use some exception handling from the Voto Core package. First thing we do is we create a session from Voto 3. Then we could also create a client from Voto 3 and a client from that session that we created earlier. Give it a region name. You can pick the region that is closest to you. Next, we'll create a subnet group, giving it this name. Here are some of the parameters you need in order to run this function. Then we're going to authorize our security group. One thing I should mention is the appsettings.py file. This is how you access the variables that were inside of that. So there's an app settings security group ID variable. This is how you access that value and use it inside the script. Here we're adding another rule to our security group. This allows us to access the console from our laptop. All of this code will be included in the description below. Next, we create the cluster. You have to make sure you create the cluster before you can create the instance. So right now I'm creating the cluster, giving it the name. I want to use Aurora PostgreSQL. That's the name of the engine that I'm using. I have to wait until the cluster is available. So this may take a few minutes. You want to make sure to wait until the cluster is available before you continue on. That's what this statement does. It keeps checking on the cluster and it keeps trying until it's available. Okay, once the cluster is available, then you create the instance. Here's some settings on how I would create a DB instance. One of the key ones here is what class. This is the compute power that you're setting up here. Once again, you have to wait until the instance is available. Once it's available, then you can start creating your own database. Here, I'm just dropping a database if it exists, and then I'm creating that database. Then I'm closing the connection. And that's all there is to this one. So let's go ahead and run this. This one's finished quickly. Here we're creating some session clients and Boda clients. Go back here. We can see that took about two seconds to create the subnet group. So here I'm going to show you in the console that we've created the subnet group. There's no databases yet, but we've created the subnet group. 
and you can see that it exists here. This is using the default VPC. Like I said before, you may have to create your own VPC for this. If so, you can see my other video on how to create VPCs. But for now, the default VPC works just fine. Okay, now we're gonna run this, creating our new rule. You can see it took 1.3 seconds. Most of these are very quick. Maybe take a few seconds. Okay, this is the new rule. You can see that it shows up here. It has the IPv4 option opening up this for me to access from my laptop. Next, we'll create the cluster, and this may take a while. Okay, so it says two seconds, but it's actually not finished. So we go to the next wait command here, run that. This will take a lot longer than two seconds. So this is just sending the command, not waiting for it to finish. This actually will test to see if it's finished. And you can see from the console that this is creating right now. Like I say, this probably take five or 10 minutes. Once it's finished, I'll come back. Okay, looks like this cell is finished. Let's go and check on the console now. Okay, in the console, you can see that this is available. Next, we're gonna create the instance underneath the cluster. This can also take a while. Okay, so we wait. We go here and refresh. And you can see the instance is being created. It'll go through a few different statuses. So there's several steps in creating an instance. You'll see them show up here one by one. When it's finished, it will show a green available. Okay, it looks like it finished. It took about seven minutes. We'll go ahead and check the console. And the console also says available. So now we can go ahead and create our database. Okay, here's the code to create the database. I'll go ahead and run this. It looks like it's finished pretty quickly. So we'll look for the test DB API dev database now. And we'll be using PG admin for this. I've already set up the connection and you can see that I've created the test DB API dev database. There's no tables in it. You can go ahead and create tables if you want, but the, you can see there's a, there's a default schema here already set up for you. And in case you don't have PG admin set up, you can go ahead and run this notebook here. It will just test the connection to make sure that it's working. So you can see that something came back. There's a schema called public information schema under the PG catalog. So it looks like everything was created successfully. Now I'm gonna show you how to delete everything for when you're finished your project, or if you have to make major changes to your database and you just wanna start over again. One thing I should point out is you have to be sure to delete these in the correct order. In some cases, you can't delete something until something else has already been deleted. So just follow the order that I have in the script here. Go ahead and run this. Give it the instance name I'm going to delete. So instance should be deleted now. We'll go check in the console. So you can see the instance is deleting. This may take a few minutes. And this is another case where we have to be sure to wait until it's finished before we continue. So I'll run this wait statement. Once it comes back with results, then we know that the instance has been deleted. Okay, it looks like it finished. It took 13 minutes to complete. Let's go check the console again. And you can see the instance is gone now. We can just see the cluster. So we'll delete the cluster. Run the wait statement again. Okay, it looks like the cluster is deleted now. Let's check the console. Hit the refresh key. And you can see there are no instances and no clusters found. And now we'll clean up the security group. And then we'll refresh here. You can see the security group is missing now, has been deleted. And then finally, we'll delete the subnet group. Check on the subnet group and it no longer exists. Okay, well, that's all I have for today. This should be all you need to get started with Postgres on AWS. Thank you for watching our video. See you next time.